I'll show you that link in just a bit. Charlie Patton was born in 1891, maybe, and he's widely considered to be the father of the Delta Blues. His style was honed at Dockery Plantation in Mississippi and later influenced many of the great musicians in the area from the likes of Tommy Johnson, Howlin' Wolf, and the king of Delta Blues singers, Robert Johnson. So yeah, he's important to the blues. And in this video, we're gonna look at three fantastic Delta Blues licks from the master. Charlie Patton. What's up you guys, John here with your Tuesday Blues where each week we come together to talk about blues or sit down for a lesson just like this one that we're about to get into. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and now let's get into the lesson. You can play each of the licks in this video in standard tuning, but I'll use a capo to get a little bit closer to Patton's performance as close as I can. Now these licks certainly sound great without a capo, but if you've got one laying around, slap it on the second fret for this first lick and let's go. This first lick comes comes from one of my favorite Patton tunes, Green River Blues, and it's got some serious swagger. It comes up in the verses with some variation throughout, and it provides like this perfect contrast to Patton's deep growl of a voice. Let's listen. Let's dig in to Green River Blues. I'm in standard tuning, but I've got a capo at the second fret. So all the fret numbers that I'm gonna call out will be relative to the capo. Just view this as the new nut, making this an open string, first fret, second fret, third fret, and so on. But we're gonna jump up here to the seventh fret on the first string and the eighth fret on the second string. And the keen observers out there will recognize that as that train whistle sound. And that's where we're gonna start this lick. And a couple things about this entire uh, Green River Blues part that we're gonna cover here is kind of get in the mindset of using your thumb for like a down stroke, like strumming down and your index finger for up. And the down strokes will happen for the most part on beat. One, two, three, four. And your index will fill in where necessary um, on the upstrokes, with upstrokes rather, in between the beats. So one and two and three and four and just spend a couple minutes getting that motion, getting comfortable with that because we're going to use it to a great degree throughout these few bars here. So back to our first bar. We've got, with that in mind, downstrokes with the thumb. And by the way, that works whether you're wearing a thumb pick or not. So we're going one, two, three, and four. Notice that we played on the and of three, so I did sneak in an upstroke, a little brush up with the index finger there. One, two, three, and four. And of course, anytime you're in this train whistle position here, feel free to give it a little push. With just some tiny little micro bends. Sounds great with it, sounds great without it, right? Then we're gonna move into the second measure. We start off with a pair of the train whistles where we go one and, so that's down, up, and then this is a cool little move and something that you should definitely know. We're going back down to the fifth fret, fourth fret, so hold that shape, go fifth fret, fourth fret, and then we're going two and, remember, down, up, so that'll help you with you know what finger does what. So that's thumb, index, then go down to the third fret and lift up your index finger. So three and, that's the beat. And then finally four, push through the top two strings. And then and of four is brushing up through the top three strings. So we get a lick that sounds like this. Really cool. And then we go into some pretty complicated strumming here. You could get by just by going, you know, with that up, down, over an E chord shape here. But uh, Charlie Patton definitely throws some really cool rhythmic tricks at us here for the next couple measures. Let's take a closer look. We're gonna start by strumming down across all six strings. That's beat one and for beat two. So we're gonna let that hang for one and the and of one. So beat two, we come back and we're really targeting this move here. 
So you want to brush through with a down. Remember, this is beat two. So down on strings four and three and do a hammer on from the open third string to the first fret. And you could totally push through and catch an extra string or two. This doesn't have to be super controlled, but make sure you get that, that hammer on in there. That's key. You really want that to sound. But then here, we're gonna play on the and of two with a brush up, right? So we're going. So that's one, two, and. For two, or sorry, for the third beat, we're gonna lift up on the fifth string and expose that open fifth string. And we're gonna push through and hammer on up to the second fret. But at the top of that hammer on, we're gonna do a brush up. So it's down on beat three, and then just get back in your E chord shape here and do a brush up to finish out beat three. That's the end of three before moving on to beat four, which is another one of these moves. Down, up. All right, so here's this measure slowly. And we kind of continue that in the next measure, but we've got a super cool trick. One of my favorite things about this entire tune really is, uh, is coming up. But what we're gonna do is start off with this down, up, that's just the sixth string by itself, and then brush up through the top three strings. Then we've got another one of these hammer-ons and then brush-ups, so that's down, hammer-on, up. Then, here's what we do that's super cool. Move your ring finger to the second fret on the third string and bend it up. All right, so that's beat three, and then the end of three is the open second string. And what you're doing there is pushing this note toward that note. It exists right there at the fourth fret. So you're really pushing that and hinting to that note. You're kind of scooping and pushing and bending toward that open second string. Right? It sounds really good. And uh, I'm going to talk about this in a future lesson, but for this lesson, I decided to change things up and put an unwound third string on my guitar. I don't normally do that, but that's given me a lot of latitude here to bend. So I can get kind of crazy with the bends here because this string doesn't have as much tension on it, right? So a whole lot easier to bend. But you may have already noticed that uh, tuning is an issue. We're going to dive into that in a different different discussion. But it's it's really working great right here in this particular lick. So we're bending up and then coming back down, doing a hammer on for beat four and then brush up through the top three string. And then of course, we can just end it out top of the next measure with an E. And you can keep that rolling if you like to. This is a great little section to repeat all this rhythm and then that bend in there as well. So now let's have a look slowly at the, the second couple of bars because there's definitely a lot happening there with the rhythm. So let's just kind of step through these two bars. Let's do that again. Super cool. All right, and pairing that with our train whistle intro to this piece. By the way, if you're a premium member, you can download the tab and you have access to the interactive Sound Slice tab player so you can slow this down and really dig in. If you're not a member, you can check out how to become one in the link in the description, but of course you could just pause the video and work your way through the tab. This next move happens in another fantastic tune, Rattlesnake Blues, and it has some similarities to what we covered in Green River Blues, but I absolutely love the slide that helps connect and transition from this high train whistle part down to 
the open position. Sometimes it's subtle differences like this one that really make something special. And for me, at least, this one small tweak makes this lick in Rattlesnake Blues just really stand out. <laughs> All right, Rattlesnake Blues, the part that we're gonna look at is really coming out of this tried and true. Train whistle territory here, right? This is going to be the seventh and eighth fret above the capo. Keep that in mind, this is all relative to the capo. And we're just gonna crank on this. What we're gonna do is set it up by thumping the bass, the open six string, and then brush ups. So on and of one, two, and three and four on the end of four and by the way i'm putting a little slight push on that it's barely a bend but i am just getting that bend happening you don't have to do that but feels so good right so we're gonna do that we hit the open six string and then and two and three and four and a four hook your thumb over Hit the seventh fret on the sixth string and then open again and kind of start that pattern. It's a, a good bit more abbreviated in the second measure that we're going to really kind of just stumble into that bass. So we go four and one and then and of one, two and three and. All right, so there's something new three and. That's just one upstroke, three pull off for the and of three and then this is the magic this is really all all that it takes sometimes just grab that seventh fret and slide down that's going to happen for beat four the entirety of beat four right slides a slide like that is so powerful you think about big bills hey hey and that slide up you know you know what we're doing here is taking that down and once we're there, we're going to play with some tones from E. So get in your E shape here. And what we're going to do is hit the downbeat, open sixth string, first fret, third string, and come up to the second fret. You can do that, whatever you do. And then back down to the first, and then second fret on the fourth string. We switch strings there open second string and then boom here on the second fret of the fifth string all right now worried about the picking here i really get into this when i'm playing through uh like these examples in charlie Patton style i really get into this sort of idea of down is the thumb that's sort of the down beats and the one two three four and the ands and everything in between happen with this brush stroke up right that's certainly not always the case but it's a good sort of thing to keep in mind at least with these examples down up down up down up one and two and three and four and and i'm using that to kind of set me up for my picking uh that i'm going to do here because we got some single string picking which requires some accuracy and you could grab your pick and just you know do that but what i'm going to do is kind of keep that that thing going i'm going to hit the bass so then when i pluck that first fret third string i'm doing that with my index finger because that's the and of one one and same thing with two that's down with the pick because it's a, a beat a main quarter note beat that's beat two then the and of is again with the index finger because i'm coming up right and then i'm going down on the second string or second fret of the fourth string rather and then up so index finger open second string and then down and there's nothing left that's b4 uh, we just hold that for a quarter note all right for the final bar we're actually going to break that pattern in a very classic charlie Patton way we're going to hit the downbeat with the thumb but then three brush ups so up with the index finger on that third one which is the and of two 
I'm gonna put down the dominant seventh. That's gonna be at the third fret on the second string. Just think of this as a big old E7 shape, right? And that's what makes this the E dominant seven. So we've got one and two and three and, whoop, keep it down, three and four and. So three and four and. All right, you hear this a lot in Charlie Patton's playing. Standard move of his, but he uses it to great effect right here to round us out with Rattlesnake Blue. So now let's listen to this lick played, these, these four bars played together slowly. Next up, we roll into Pony Blues, one of Patton's most popular songs, and we're moving the capo from the second fret down to the first. And this lick that we're gonna look at occurs in the turnaround, and it's absolutely brilliant. We don't just stay on the E chord for the turnaround. We don't do the cliche blues ending. There's something really magical about this turnaround. I absolutely love it. So let's give it a listen. absolutely love Pony Blues. It's a fantastic song and this particular part that we're going to study right now is um, complicated and simple kind of at the same time. Maybe you'll make sense of that statement as we move through it. The first measure starts us out out of this B7 shape but we're actually going to pick up the pinky and we're just going to hit one and. So that's bass and then a brush up on the top two strings and then this is super cool what we're going to do is put that pinky down on the second fret first string under that you know b7 chord shape right and we're going to i'm doing a pinching motion here where i'm kind of pushing through strings three and two with my thumb and then plucking the first one it's kind of a pinching motion that's b2 and then for the end of two I'm sliding up to the fourth fret. Then, once I'm there, I'm still thinking about that B7 shape. I'm hitting the bass now at the fourth fret. All right? Kind of gives this a different vibe, really, from a, a standard move in E Delta Blues, right? So, what we're doing is one and two and three. Then, and of three is the open first string. And then here's something in interesting. You would expect a bass note for beat four, right? You know, we get, get those real strong quarter note divisions and they're usually bass notes. But here we kind of turn it on its head for beat four, hit the open second, and then down back to the second fret on the fifth string and of course all the fret numbers and everything open strings all that is in relation to the capo being basically you can view it as the new nut this is now fret zero right all right so um let's play through that measure an ending on the end of four with a bass note particularly that one on the fifth string really sets us up nicely for this next measure all right, so we kind of roll through. We get kind of this stumbling effect. And of four, downbeat. And of one, we hit the open first string. And that, by the way, was second fret on the fourth string. All right, so that's one. And then we go up to the fourth fret, two, and that's the open second string. Then down to the second fret of the fifth string, open second string again. And then that classic hammer on up from the open third, first fret third, and then finally kind of moving our way back to this note, second fret on the fourth string. This is the measure that to me is, is dead simple. There is nothing here that you don't need and everything that you need. It's, it's perfect in a lot of ways. Let's take a look at these two together and maybe you'll see what I mean. All right, and we could just stop, do some strumming there, but that's not what happens in Pony Blues. We kind of keep going with yet another really cool move. What we're gonna do is hit the open sixth string, then make this little shape, right? You could do it 
kind of like we did with that B7 slide. If that's what you want to do, that's totally cool. I'm going to use these two fingers, but it's on the third string. This is at the third fret. Open second string, and then on the first string, third fret. So three, zero, three. All right, sounds kind of gnarly, but we're on our way to something else. Right? So we're going up. We're going to move that up a half step. So we've got four, zero, four. All right? And then when you put that together with the bass, it sounds really cool, right? One and two. And of two, hit the bass, then brush up. So here we're kind of turning that bass on its head again. We're going to play before the beat with the bass. So and of two, two is the brush up, or uh, sorry, three. So and of two is the bass, and then three is the brush up. And then we're going to end this with a really cool move. We're going to pull off from four on the first string to the open first string. Second fret, second string, open, second string. All right, check this out how these work together. And from here, we do a nice strum out, but of course, it's got some coolness too. We're going to hit the bass for beat one. And what I really want to do is think downbeat or, or the strong beats, the quarter note pulse, I want to do down, 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 down. And then anything in between is going to be played with my index finger here with a brush up movement. So I've got bass, then on the end of one, I'm going to strum through particularly strings three and four here. I want to hit those two because I'm coming down on those same three strings for beat two but I'm putting my pinky on the second fret, right? So we get a cool suspended vibe happening here. And then, and of two, top two strings, but that's a brush up. Remember the in-betweens, the ands, they're gonna be brush ups with the index. Then we've got two downs with the uh, big full chord shape here, the E chord shape. So the strumming in that measure is like this. and the whole thing. Of course, these are not the only fantastic Charlie Patton licks. I mean, they don't call you the father of the Delta Blues for nothing. His playing is tight and his songs are entertaining and somehow at the same time, they're really deep and impactful. So give them a listen and work your way through these licks. I think you'll agree that these are indeed fantastic licks. If you like this, hit subscribe and be sure to check out my BGI. That's the premium membership from Blues Guitar Institute. You can find out more at the link below. Inside, we cover acoustic blues just like this and I really help you level up your playing through targeted courses and I give you a proven plan to help you get better at acoustic blues. I hope to see you inside BGI. Until then, practice smart and play on.